Oh man, freaking Taco Bell. Uh, I'm done with that. What the? Chris! Yeah? Where the hell's the toilet paper? What are you talking about? There's no toilet paper. There's just a shelf with three seashells on it. Yeah, you don't know how to use the three seashells? What, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, you primitive caveman? Welcome back to the Out of Touch Podcast. I'm Chris, that's Bill, and today we are watching Demolition Man from 1993. So, Bill, besides for you crumbling up your Taco Bell fourth meal bag... Um, what? Yeah, fourth meal. You watch way too many commercials. It, it was a thing. Okay. Anyway, what did you think of Demolition Man, Bill? This movie's a lot of fun. I like this movie a lot. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, though. <laughs> Seriously. No, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I have no... I never really watched the Rambo movies, but this is my favorite non-Rocky Stallone movie, I think. Yeah, I think it might be mine, too. Uh, I really like it. Um, it it's, it's a really ridiculous movie. Um, I guess, like, the short version of the movie is... Um, John Spartan, which that's his name, <laughs> is a police officer who does a lot of collateral damage when he's busting crimes and different gangsters. Or and saving little girls from being held hostage. I love that scene. Oh, what? that is one of the best bits in the entire movie with the, <laughs> that you destroyed an entire $3 million mini mall to save a one child and the ransom was only like $25,000 or whatever. The little girl's like, fuck you. So good. <laughs> and he's just like, good answer. <laughs> the right answer. Yeah. It's like, who cares? He saved the little girl. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, John Spartan, police officer, does a lot of collateral damage. In the not too distant future of the way more than recent past of 1996 LA, which is a hellscape in this timeline. Yes, which is the second movie I can think of in 1996 where LA is a hellscape. Although maybe, wait, is Escape from LA earlier or later? I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't know. It might be in the 90s too, <laughs> but. Possibly. Yeah, it's weird. Um, it, at least it's a little more accurate. It's like, okay, everything's on fire. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> is that too far? <laughs> uh, Hollywood sign was never on fire. That's true. <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, so he is a cop trying to catch a gangster named... He's more than a gangster. He's like a... Crime lord? He's a supervillain! A supervillain? Yeah. He's like the Joker! Yeah, I guess. Simon Phoenix, played by Wesley Snipes, who is just having a fucking ball in this movie. He is insane in this movie. He looks like he's having so much fun. <laughs> yeah. It's weird, too, because it's like he's like anti-Blade with his, like, hair. <laughs> So anyway, he goes to catch Simon Phoenix. Um, Simon Phoenix has a bunch of people that were held hostage. He hijacked a bus. And I was like, fill the people. Yeah. Because they, I guess, crossed into the, this is my play a area. You don't go here because I'll fucking kill you. Yeah, apparently um, this area in LA is like no man's land and people Basically. weren't supposed to go there. And like, even Simon's like, the cops don't come here. Like, you know, ambulances don't come here. Nobody comes here. Why the heck did this bus come here? <laughs> but she, long story short... The entire place blows up yeah. because Simon Phoenix rigged it to blow. And they find the bodies of all the hostages. And Simon Phoenix is like, I, I told him he didn't care. Yeah. So he gets frozen because that's what they do with people in the future of 1996. Yeah, when sure. <laughs> instead of throwing you in jail, they freeze you and also kind of reprogram you through some sort of like brain manipulation somehow. Subliminal messaging type yeah. programming. And he wakes up in the future of 2032 and everything is hilariously different now. <laughs> well, what first happens is for some reason, why would Simon Phoenix even be up for parole is beyond me. I don't I know. <laughs> it's very weird because- How did he get up for parole before him? Before John Spartan? Yeah. But then again, we find out. It was rigged. Yeah, of course. And he escapes because he somehow knows how to unlock the latches on the security lock with a password, which what was it like teddy bear or something like that? Something, yeah. He, 
I guess we'll get into it, but... Um, this future world of San Angeles... San Angeles. ...is a... I guess it's a society where Law and Order won, but... I don't know, freedom lost? It, yeah, it's <laughs> like a weird, you know, uh, dystopian type of future. It's a dystopian utopia. Yeah. Because everything's clean. It's all nice on the surface. But then you start looking at it and you're like, wait a minute. Wait, people can't have sex? They can't kiss? You can't swear, which is one of the best things in the movie. There's no freedom of speech. Every time you swear, you get a ticket. Yeah. And those ticket machines are everywhere. <laughs> so often in the faint in the background when someone says, shit, you hear it. <laughs> there, there, there's only one time in the movie, I think, where the ticket machine's not there. And it's when um, John Spartan and the... Um, I think her name's Huxley, are like talking in a car and for some reason the ticket machine doesn't go off when he says fuck. Hmm. But... Was it ever shown to be in the vehicles? Yeah. Because oh, like at the beginning he goes in the vehicle hmm. and it, it shows it. Hmm. They're like so everywhere. So I remember it being in like the phone booth, backgrounds of everywhere. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess Simon Phoenix gets broken out of prison murders a bunch of people and the police in this world even though it, realistically it's only been like 15 16 years mm -hmm. they are so unprepared for any kind of actual work yeah it's weird because it, it is in the future but it's not that far in the future it's, it would almost make more sense if it was like a hundred years in the future it feels like it should be because the movie opens in 96, and then it j jumps to 2032. Yeah. We know there was, things got bad in the early 20th century, maybe 21st century. They mentioned an earthquake in 2010. Yeah. And they kind of sound like there hasn't been a murder since in like 16 years or something like that. That's not a long enough time for a completely and utterly inept police force of like, let's face it, kindergarteners <laughs> yeah um they're, they're like so unprepared for anything they have like their little um palm pilots or whatever that like tell them to do like i love when simon phoenix is like hacking uh one of the computer terminals and then the guy the police walk up and like the terminals like say in an assertive manner <laughs> like put your hands behind your back and lie down yeah <laughs> and he just kicks the shit out of them too he does because um, I guess you'd say he's been, like, modified while he was... I mean, he was already a dangerous lunatic, but he's been amped up because he can work all the tech. He knows how to ha hack computers. He's stronger, more skilled at fighting than he was when he went in. Yeah. All to kill Dennis Leary. Yeah. <laughs> Just, like, weird. Um, uh, let's see, like... I guess we should just like talk about like some of the good moments in this movie um, because it's a movie that has like a lot of like really hilarious yet cool stuff in it. Well, well in the scene we were just talking about, I, just, I had an observation when I was watching it, which I just think is, it's just the product of its time more so than anything. When uh, they're trying to catch Simon Phoenix after he like uh, escapes the cryo prison, Sandra Bullock's character, she's talking to the computer and she's giving a voice command. But then she's like tapping in the keypad. Why? What is she typing? <laughs> it's a, it's a key, like, it's a keyboard. That's what you do with computers. <laughs> this is how you can tell this movie was made in like 1992, but before anyone had a home computer in great quantities. Yeah. Because you just see people like typing on the letter keys and then just stuff happening in a computer. And it's even more egregious here because she's just telling the computer what to do. And she's typing. Why is she typing? What is she typing? What's happening there? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, that's like a thing with like, you know, they always show somebody hacking into a mainframe and they're clicking away. But in real life, it's like you just put a flash drive in and then it runs something in the background yeah. and then you just wait around. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because uh, her character, Huxley, she's kind of like, oh, man, I want some, like, action and stuff. She's and, like a, a retro 90s junkie. Yeah. She's all about the nostalgia. She's got a Lethal Weapon poster in her office. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> Was that Lethal Weapon 2, I thought? I think so, yeah. <laughs> but, um, 
Yeah, and then she finally gets action, and it's like this horrible murderer man that yeah, that they're so inept that that they like we gotta crack Sylvester Stallone out of that ice, get him out of there. Yeah, it's weird too because they they unfreeze him. You know, like the police chief is a real dick for some reason. Just, just police chief is a it's a it's a cliche. Yeah, he's just he's just their dick. There's like one person on the police force that still knows. Um, you know, John Spartan, because yeah. he's been on the force for, I guess, like 40 years now. Yep. We see him in the, the younger version, him in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Flying a helicopter. Which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I just love when he just talks to him and he's just like, man, it's been forever since I've fucking seen you. And then, like, the, like, <laughs> ticket machine's going off and then, like, he just walks up to the ticket machine and just starts saying a bunch of curse words while taking a bunch of tickets from Well, it. the reason why he does that is because of the running gag that everybody <laughs> remembers from this movie, the three seashells. Yes. <laughs> because there's no toilet paper, there's three seashells. No. What do the three seashells do, Chris? I don't know. We get no context on how you use them or even why they changed the three seashells instead of uh, toilet paper. <laughs> I kind of love that. There's a lot of stuff in the world that's like very interesting in um, Demolition Man. Like the music they listen to are just all commercial jingles. Yeah, and they call them mini tunes, <laughs> which is kind of funny because I could see something like that happening. Because I, I guess it is kind of changing now, but you know, it seems like all the streaming services for a while weren't having commercials, and then it's like, man, are commercials going to be something that you'll forget about someday? And then. Younger people will discover them and be like, oh, what are these? Nah, but there's money to be made. That's definitely not happening now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way things are going, but it was an interesting thing. There's like a weird East meets West type of aesthetic to a lot of the stuff in the movie, too. Yeah, a lot of people were wearing kimonos. Yeah, it's weird. Like Some of them just look like Jedi robes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, is this the Star Wars galaxy? So Some of them are definitely kimonos. Like, there's the one guy, he's kind of like doing that, like... I don't know how to associate like, Bob. Yeah, he, he's, doing he's the that, liquor. Yeah, he's doing that like walk that you see like um, Japanese ladies do like with oh, the yeah. kimono in one scene. Yeah, or at least it kind of looks like that. I, I don't mean, know if it's t it, like intentional or what. Looking but, at that outfit, I'm going to say it's very intentional. Yeah, because he has like the whole thing around yeah. his waist and everything. He's, his most is the kimono. Some of them, like I said, they, they just look like they're wearing Jedi robes to me. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're very feudal Japan looking for some reason. <laughs> It's a weird thing, but kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, they um, just they threw a lot of stuff into like the world building, yeah, like the Taco Bell thing of how it's the only restaurant apparently because it won the franchise wars, and it's like what what does that mean? Is it like actual wars, or was it just like a bunch of corporate takeovers? I'm just gonna assume a bunch of corporate takeovers, probably. Though if you're if you're in a different part of the world, like when it first came out, it was Pizza Hut, not Taco Bell. It's so weird. Yeah, there was no Taco Bells in certain parts of the world when that happened. I do love when um, the guy who is like the main uh, leader of the city, I don't even know what Co I could call him. Like, Cocteau. Cocteau. No, but um, like he's like, I guess like the cult leader or whatever. Yeah, he doesn't have a title, but he's, yeah, he basically is a cult leader. Yeah, because like everybody follows his philosophy. He's, he's, a, he's like a friendly fascist. Yeah. <laughs> Taco, but I, I do love where he's just like, you saved my life. I'm going to take you to Taco Bell. And then like, John just... Spartan's just like, wow, he's going to take me to Taco Bell. I guess it's been a while since I've had a burrito. And then, but this is just weird. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like every restaurant is Taco Bell now. <laughs> and it is, uh, it's so weird, that detail. of <laughs> Taco Bell, the dominant restaurant. So strange. Yeah. But I, I will say, there's a lot of, like, really cool action in the movie, too. I, I really enjoy the, the it's our, we have our opening action scene, but our first real action scene in the future is at the museum. Yeah. When uh, Phoenix is like, I need a gun, goes to the museum, because that's where all the guns are. Yeah. I love, the like. The hall of violence. Yes. <laughs> I love that he's, like, kick, starts kicking the thing, he can't break the glass. Guy walks up, I'm sorry, what's your boggle? And he's like, oh, for God's sake. Wait a minute, how much do you weigh? He freaking throws the guy into the glass. And I love the I love when he's like all loaded up and he's like, wait a minute, this is the future. Where's all the phaser guns? Yeah. And he finds that one like plasma rifle. Yeah, it was like the last one made um before they stopped making guns apparently. 
That's Which is thing. like weird. It's like the whole world is peaceful, I guess. That's one thing I've always been confused about by this movie. Is like everywhere like this, or just like is this just California in 2032? <laughs> yeah. Like, like is New York City just like escape from New York? Who knows? <laughs> and this, like we don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of questions that are not really answered in this world. Like I don't know. Like is is all of America like this? And like the rest of the world is just like a uh, I don't know a Mad Max wasteland like. I'm, I'm just, I don't know. Either that or the rest of the world's just normal. It's just like, yeah, that place is weird. Yeah, Ameri uh, America got real weird. <laughs> they don't even, they used to have cheeseburgers there. They don't do anything like that anymore. Yeah. It, it's a very strange uh, thing, but yeah, that museum fight is uh, pretty good with, um, you know, the action going on. and. I like the little touch because there was the earthquake that they mentioned that there was just like a art like an archaeological dig site of a of a real street from LA and they they fight there and Sloan hits him with a TV <laughs> yeah yeah I, I love that too because he just like grabs the TV by the plug and just kind of swings it at him like a morning star or something <laughs> yeah it's pretty ridiculous it's a lot of fun man the the names though Marcus Phoenix or Simon not, Simon Phoenix. Phoenix I'm thinking of Gears huh. of War with Marcus Phoenix that's like, so weird. I was like, I wonder if they got that from this movie. But anyway. Who the hell knows? Yeah. I do know that, I don't know what video game. There's some video game, I'm pretty sure, that used the three seashells as an Easter egg. Oh, really? That's great. I don't know what it is. I'm going to look it up, and I'm going to put the picture right here over me talking. Nice. But I know there's some video game that threw in the three seashells as an Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, I always got, like, this movie confused with, like, Judge Dredd for some reason. Just because, like, the police uniforms are kind of similar, except, like, no, like, helmet. Yeah, I guess if you take the, the Judge Dredd shoulder blades off, it's a similar sh cop outfit. Yeah, because it's, like, it's Sylvester Sloan. He's, like, a future cop in, like, two movies. But I think Judge Dredd came after this. Okay. It was, like, a couple years later. Yeah, because this movie's, you know, later than I thought it was, because it's in 1993. I thought this movie was made in the 80s for some reason, but... I guess it definitely wasn't. Nope. Um, it's weird. There's a lot of, like, weird stuff in the future, like how there's no physical contact. Like, all the people, like, do a weird high-five thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they had COVID or something. Yeah. There, there's, like, all those, like, weird future phrases they say. Like, you said, what's your boggle? <laughs> and They're all, like, greetings and salutations. They talk like robots. Yeah. It's, like, I forgot what they say. They say, like, are you having, like, a, like, pleasant day or something weird They're, everyone's so over overly polite it's sickening yeah it, <laughs> it's weird behavior greetings and salutations good sir yeah um like maybe growing up in new jersey i just like i see people that act like that i'm like the hell's your problem <laughs> <laughs> something's wrong with this person they're clearly lying for some reason <laughs> nobody talks like that what do you have to hide what are you hiding <laughs> What's into that kimono, you yeah. freak? <laughs> Seriously. It's weird, too, because, like, the no contact thing is, like, you know, people don't even, like, procreate, like, through sex anymore. They just go to, like, a lab. Yeah, like, they make a point of saying that abortion's illegal, pe pregnancy's illegal, kissing, I think, is illegal. Yeah, it's weird because, like, there's the scene where, you know, like, uh, Huxley asks Spartan, like, do you want to have sex? And then she brings out, like, the virtual reality helmets. And I never noticed this, but she also hands him, like, a towel, too. Which I'm like, huh. Well, I mean, I guess I guess that still... makes sense. Yeah. But <laughs> I never noticed that detail. I was like, okay, <laughs> weird. Oh, man. Yeah, shortly after that is, like, one of the weirdest moments in the movie. Where, like, he goes to his apartment and just randomly gets a video phone call from the topless chick. Yeah. Because I'm just assuming some sleazy executive was like, wait a minute, there's no tits in this movie. We gotta get some tits in this movie. Come on. It's rated R. There needs to be at least one pair of tits. Come on, someone just... Sandra Bullock, show us your tits. No? Oh. Fine. We'll get someone, some other random desperate actress to show her tits. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is so random. It is weird. It's because it's like a weird overly pc world and you just don't think you'd see a topless woman in it yeah at least in the above ground maybe in the underground you could have snuck some tits in that's true like maybe that's where you could have snuck your tits in not in that weird video call that for some reason yeah i don't know like i mean yeah i guess it was that period where it's just like you need to have some nudity in this movie but i um, guess was it just like 
The cursing is not enough to get an R rating. It's some, get some tits in there. Yeah, I guess so. I, I don't know. It, it's it just sticks out. It's just so weird. It is weird. Look, don't get me wrong. I'm sure when I was 15, I was like, yeah. <laughs> but now I'm just like, huh. I think I've only, I before like I actually saw the movie on like Blu-ray. I only saw it on like TV. So like I was just like, huh. I didn't even know about that part. Well, I definitely saw it on like basic cable but i always uh mostly saw it on like regular cable i think yeah me too so i always saw like the TV i'm sure part. i saw versions of it where i was just where I, that didn't happen and then i saw it on cable and then that happened i was like whoa what <laughs> <laughs> i i like how like that whole scene too like they don't like say it yet but like he has like a thing of yarn and he starts like unraveling it around his arm and then like the next scene is just like i made you a sweater because that's what they program me to do in like ice prison for some reason. Some kind of just something to do with his hands. Yeah, it's like it offsets like your per- your negative personality traits, and he's like, "So I'm a seamstress." What the hell? <laughs> it's kind of weird, but it's kind of funny too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, there's some like stuff that's like kind of like might be in the future, like the self-driving cars and stuff. I guess we're, cl- we're getting close to that. Yeah, Being we like, are. Yeah. I mean, that's what I've read 5G is technically for. So, mm. um, you know, there's the whole stuff with, like, the cars not running on gas type stuff. Mm. I guess we should talk about, like, the weird underground. Yes. I mean, we, we see him early on. Dennis Leary is leading a, basically everyone that just said, fuck you and your fascist, overly controlling bullshit. We want to eat cheese doodles and stuff and yeah. jerk off to porn <laughs> yeah like drive cars that run on gasoline <laughs> <laughs> or just you know eat a burger yeah i love when they go in the underground and um john spartan's reaction where you know he gets the burger and the beer from the lady down there he starts eating it and then, like huxley's like there are no cows down here do you even know what you're eating don't, and then, don't like, ask where the meat came from and the lady says it's like rat and then like he's just like he looks at it takes another bite and he's like not bad and i'm like yeah that would be my reaction too cause it's like if you already took a bite of it if it, if it tasted good and it was well yeah. made and you've been in this like weird world where it's like you can't get any other meat it's like you know what close enough yeah <laughs> But yeah, the underground is just like a weird aspect of this movie with uh, this city that, you know, is just, (laughs) I don't know. It's just like completely underground and it's like you can have meat there and kind of do what you want, but. And, you know, like Dennis Leary just randomly breaks into one of his stand-up routines, essentially. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's weird, too, because it's like, it's not even like they're really trying to take over the world or anything they're just they're trying just... to get food and just fuck with cocktail because he's a prick and they hate him yeah like they just they make graffiti and they steal food that's all they do it's interesting too because like cocktail is the one that thawed simon phoenix gave him all the programming to kill uh you know dennis leary i forgot his character's edgar name friendly edgar friendly okay yeah. I, I also like he was smart enough to be like you also can't hurt me so Simon Phoenix is like, damn it, motherfucker. It, it's weird, too, because Edgar Friendly doesn't even want to take over. It's he like, just wants to keep doing what he's doing. But I guess, like, Cocteau is just, like, such a control freak that he can't have, like, this one weird aspect yeah. of what his perfect society is that he, like, pretty much, like, ruined all his power by releasing this lunatic. Yeah, who he made even more dangerous than humanly possible. And it's funny because I do love how he can't kill um, Cocteau, but, but then he's just like... He finds a loophole because Cocteau is dumb enough to thaw out some more goons for him. Yeah. And Simon Phoenix just throws the gun to one of his goons and says, would you kill him? So good. I love that. Yeah. But I also love the line before that where he's like, that's what you remind me, evil Mr. Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like he just didn't think of that. So, what a moron. Yeah. I also like that uh, Bob is just immediately like, because he's just a bootlicker. He's like, I'll, I'll help you, sir. Yeah. It's interesting because Simon Phoenix, um, you know, his whole like thing is just like, he just wants to cause like chaos and mayhem. He he is like what you said. He's a super villain. It's, this, it's almost like Wesley Snipes was auditioning to play the Joker in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
makes a strong case. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, because like there's really <laughs> no logic to like anything he does. Well, no, because he's in the past. It seems like he had like a drug empire, but he's not doing that because who can he sell drugs to in a, in a world where nobody does drugs? And he's yeah. got the thing in his brain like kill like you're friendly, kill like you're friendly, kill like you're friendly. Right. But then he also gets this notion. I'm like. This world is such a pushover. If I just get all my buddies out of cryo prison, I can just rule the freaking world. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> like, he's gonna, like, his goal becomes I'm just gonna take over San Angeles, and these little punk ass bitches can't do anything to stop me. Because I have guns, they have glow sticks, and as soon as I shoot one bullet, they're just gonna, all gonna run away. Yeah. <laughs> I do love how. You know, towards the beginning of the movie when he first kills somebody, they get, like, the code. It's, like, 187. Nobody knows what it is. And it's, yeah. like, murder, death, kill. <laughs> and, like, they, so... they don't say, like, kill. They keep saying, like, he keeps murder, death, killing people. <laughs> <laughs> they just can't process it for some reason. Yeah. It's like they've been brainwashed so heavily. Yeah, in, like, pretty much. 40 years. <laughs> well, I, I'll say, like, Simon Phoenix, he's a hilarious villain. I guess, like, the final confrontation is in, like, the cryogenics lab yeah because he's thawing out more goons yeah building an army but i guess um even before that we should talk there's like a pretty good car chase in the movie too where he steals one of the police cars and i guess because he has the hacking skills he doesn't need to go through like the whole um yeah, like he, when it's sylvester sloan tried to drive the car like it was just like please put in your profile and stuff yeah he knows like all the override codes and stuff like that yeah and then they have, like, the old Oldsmobile car they chase him in. Yeah. Because it's cool, I guess. <laughs> if it's, like, the whole gimmick of men from the past wreaking havoc in the future, so yeah. why not have a car from the past, too? Yeah. I, I like, too, when John Spartan jumps on top of the car and then, like, you know, uh, Simon Phoenix escapes the car and then, like, the car crashes and instead of airbags, it just, like, fills with, like, this, like, foam stuff. <laughs> It's kind of fun, and he just, like, kicks out of the foam <laughs> when it's in the thing, and then, like, all the police officers are all, like, freaking out, and then they're like, you're under arrest, and he's like, yeah, okay, and he just, like, walks away, because <laughs> they're just so bad. They're just, they're so incapable of doing anything beyond, I don't know what the hell they did prior to any of this. Did they just, like, I don't know, get cats out of trees? Yeah, I guess, <laughs> give people tickets for swearing. <laughs> even though those machines do that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Just seems like they were just there to be there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. But yeah, the final confrontation in the cryogenics lab is pretty, pretty cool. I like, it's hard to kind of pinpoint some stuff, but. There's one thing that I caught when I, I caught as far back as I was younger with the musical score of this movie. I don't know if you recognize it at all. I, I've noticed it kind of like changes a little bit. Like sometimes it sounds like a little funky sometimes when. Like if you listen to it and then go and watch Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. It's very similar. Really? Is, is it that, the same composer? I believe it is. Okay. And some composers have a tendency to just kind of copy themselves. Okay. <laughs> like there's very similar musical cues in these movies. Interesting. That's weird because Batman and Robin also has a bunch of ice stuff going on in it too. <laughs> I know. In fact, that cryogenics lab kind of seems like a set piece from Batman and Robin, except a little less colorful. A little bit. <laughs> it is interesting how he finally defeats uh, Simon Phoenix. He, like, freezes him and then just, Kicks like... his fucking head off. Yeah. I, I thought, like, for sure, like... Like, at first, I was like, oh, is the head going to shatter? And then it kind of just, like, falls on the ground, but then it does shatter, <laughs> and... I'm, it's, like, filled with pulp, <laughs> of course, because rated R... And I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> In a PG-13 movie, it would have just been like ice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... Um... And then they, I guess, agree to kind of meet, meet in the middle of Cocteau's world and the anarchy of Dennis Leary's character, Edgar. Yeah. It, it's kind of strange. 
the way it ends. It's just like, what do we do now that Cocteau's dead? And then like... It's like, well, you get a little dirtier. You get a little cleaner. A lot cleaner, actually. You fucking smell. Yeah. And well, somewhere in the middle, you'll figure it out. And then Bob, uh, right on cue, immediately starts kissing Friendly's ass. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's all he is. He's just a stooge. I do love when he <laughs> says, like, what are you wearing? A kimono? You look like a couch. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the two-tone hair, man? Pick a color. Yeah. Because <laughs> half of Dennis Leary's dialogue is just him doing stand-up riffs. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but, um, yeah. You know, this movie's, like, really silly, but it, it's really cool. I think and... some of the humor is a, was probably a little ahead of its time. Yeah. It's the idea of just, like, oh, look at this society of wimps. <laughs> yeah kind of definitely like I, I i don't think we're really going in that direction no, but no, um no. It, it's, it's a satire yeah. it's exaggerated oh yeah <laughs> and it's fun it is fun <laughs> the aesthetics of the world are pretty neat um you know because i do think we're going towards that like east meets west like fusion type of future <laughs> In some in some ways. I don't think anyone's wearing kimonos. I don't think that way, but like I'm just saying, like culturally, so, man, like a lot of people. I the guts really well. Yeah, that's true. You know, you know, it leads the eye down. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a it's a really cool movie, and um, I guess it's a pretty famous movie. It's definitely gotten more well known as time has gone by. Yeah. Like, the, the three seashell thing is, like, a meme nowadays. Yeah. Like, I think it did f- solid at the time, but I think it just got more and more well-regarded and just because of, like, how, like... It's, like, some of the comedy's pretty clever. It's, like, it's more satirical. And yeah. And it's got your solid basic action. Plus, there's the gimmick of Sylvester Stallone fighting Wesley Snipes. You know, there's a, there's a novelty to that. Yeah. I always, like, put this movie in, like, the same category with, like, other Sylvester Stallone movie, uh, the one where he's, like, doing the arm wrestling for some reason. And maybe it's that one. Maybe it's because, like, they would, like, bundle the, those movies together for some reason. It would be, like, Demolition Man and the arm wrestling movie. When I had this movie on DVD, it wasn't a Stallone four-pack. Okay. I, I know, I think there was a movie Cobra, Tango and Cash, and maybe that was the fourth one. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's it's a good movie. It, it's got, like, a really interesting world, and I guess you should definitely go see it Look, if you can, but it's not available for free on any streaming because you actually have to rent it, which kind of sucks, or you can buy it. <laughs> I buy things because I'd rather own them than have movies I like to watch disappear from a streaming service because of corporate mergers. I should have definitely bought this one. <laughs> you still can. I will. Yeah. Now, quick question. How the hell do you use the three seashells? Okay, now take the second seashell and clamp down. But before you do that, make sure you unplug the yeah! first.